It is a very challenging and trying time. And it's certainly uh, something that uh, is now been brought home quite literally in terms of my own experience just over the course of the last couple of days. Governor Gavin Newsom is speaking at a press conference earlier this week. Like so many Californians, the governor is now acknowledging the difficulties of quarantining with his family. He remains in quarantine after his kids came in contact with a CHP officer who was infected. I am joined now by CalMatters health reporter Ana Ibarra. Uh, she's been covering the latest developments regarding the governor and California's uh, restrictions. Ana, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So there is a lot to keep track of here. Obviously, a very fluid situation, I'm sure, for yourself as a reporter. So as of right now, from a statewide perspective, uh, what's involved with this curfew and how did we get here? How did the governor reach this decision? Yeah, so the curfew took, um, started on uh, Saturday and it's supposed to run for about a month until uh, December 21st. And so uh, we got here because the cases are skyrocketing. Um, hospitals are feeling the pressure and this is um, seen as a tool to sort of, um, you know, curb that spread of, of the virus. And so the curfew uh, pretty much says that you, um, that people have to stay home between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. And so the idea behind that is really to sort of uh, stop people from hanging out um, for longer hours, um, you know, you can still, uh, they were very clear and, and the officials were very clear in saying you can still go out about um, essential business. So if you have to get back or to uh, work, you can still do that. If you have to run to the grocery store, you can still do that. And if you have to, you know, walk your dog, you can still do that. Really, it's just, you know, keeping people from uh, spending too much time together and forgetting about social distancing and forgetting about their masks. Now, I know there are critics who have said, look, with this curfew in place from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., people are now just going to have house parties. Doesn't that just force more people in these colder winter months to go inside? Have you in any of your reporting seen evidence? Have they shown evidence that this is where that surge is coming from? Is, is people hanging out after hours, perhaps at bars, that sort of thing? Yeah, so they, uh, public health officials have said it's a mix of things, right? So definitely um, house gatherings and, and family gatherings are a big concern. Um, but so I know, I think in LA County, I believe in LA County, one of the um, hanging out at bars and restaurants was one of the um, reasons why people were seeing a, um, a, or why the county was seeing a spike in cases. So it's really been a mixed uh, a, a mixed bag, a mix of, of, of all um, these, these uh, circumstances of all the situations in people hanging out in different locations, not just at home, but also at bars and at restaurants. Now, I know it would seem that the rules maybe don't mean a whole lot unless they're actually enforced. We know that has been an issue. Uh, several county sheriffs uh, throughout the state refusing to enforce the governor's statewide curfew. I know the San Bernardino uh, Sheriff's Department uh, mentioned that, Sacramento County as well. So why are sheriffs saying, no, we're not cracking down on this? Yes, yeah, so sheriff's offices have said that they're, you know, they, they're really going to rely on people's voluntary compliance like they have with the mask mandate. Um, really, they uh, cited that they just don't have the resources to go after um, uh, people not following the curfew, people not wearing a mask. You know, they said, you know, we have serious crime to go after. We just don't have enough officers to send to these, uh, to, 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 to these complaints. That said, some counties, um, you know, have said that they will take the complaint and really forward it to the public health officers who then will have to deal with that, or the public health departments will have to deal with that. Okay, so the other side of this, besides enforcement, everybody kind of crossing their fingers that there will be a vaccine. Uh, soon AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Moderna, all looking to get their vaccines approved as quickly as possible. I know, uh, I believe that some might be available for some people. I know we're hearing by possibly mid-December. Uh, I know you've been doing some digging into the vaccine vaccine distribution plan, because even if a vaccine is approved and good to go, it would need to be properly stored, obviously distributed. Can you talk about the timeline for all of us here in California? Who might get these vaccines first and, and when might it be available to, to most Californians? 
Yeah, so first in line, as we know, are health workers, you know, they're in the front lines. And so uh, Pfizer vaccine uh, would be first, it looks like it's first in line. Uh, on Friday, uh, Pfizer said that they had submitted a request for emergency use authorization. Um, the FDA is having a meeting on uh, December 10th to review that data. And so they if once that happens you know and 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 Pfizer's vaccine is out uh, followed uh, by moderna uh, hopefully then uh, yes the health workers would be first according to California's plan I know that California is targeting 2.4 million um, health workers and then um, after that, we would be looking at other essential workers, people who are uh, most vulnerable at falling severely ill uh, from the virus. So they would be first, like people living in um, nursing homes, for example. And, and then after that, we'd look at, you know, more of the general population. And so the time frame for that, we're looking from uh, the public health officials I've talked to is likely in the spring. So we still have a few more months for the general population to really um, probably have access to these vaccines. Well, and it's clear the general population, a lot of people really wanting to get out there as soon as possible. On the travel front here, the TSA reported last weekend, three million people took to the skies uh, ahead of Thanksgiving. That was the busiest travel weekend since uh, this pandemic really started in March, despite you know, the CDC coming out, discouraging travel. So I wanna ask if you do plan on gathering and what you know want to see family uh, what guidelines are California health officials asking us to follow yeah so they told us to keep it short uh, no more than two hours uh, to keep it small no more than three households and to try to keep it outdoors um, if you can to celebrate earlier in the day so you can um, have it outdoors you know on just yesterday we had dr mark galley the state's top health official kind of giving us almost like a weather forecast right really encouraging people to to keep it outdoors and to wear and to wear a mask um, especially if you invite you know anyone from from outside your household so um and of course travel is being highly discouraged don't they're, they're asking for people not to um, travel outside the region uh, travel to not travel outside the state um, and for people who are coming from outside of state um, you know they're asking that they uh, quarantine for 14 days so if people from um, outside the state um, are planning to celebrate with uh, people their family here in, in California they should have they, they should be they should have been here two weeks ago and they should have been quarantining and they should be at the end of that quarantine um, by today. I'm curious, how big a role do you think COVID fatigue is really playing in all this? I'm thinking people who have been doing their part, say, since March, staying at home, really not going outside of their bubble with the hopes that now, hey, it's the holiday season. I I've been looking forward to seeing family. You know, now they're being told they they shouldn't travel. Do you think that's prompting a lot of people to, you know, and then perhaps we could we could see, you know, a surge continue? because of that. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, that is a, a that plays a big role. Uh, people are tired of staying at home. People are really looking forward to the holidays. People um, want to see their families in other states. And yes, I think one of the scary things is that we're already seeing a surge and, you know, before Thanksgiving, um, hospitals are already feeling the pressure. Um, cases are, are spiking, um, you know, and, and public health officials have said we are in the middle of a surge right now now and you know the expectation is that that will only get worse after this holiday um, you know people who gathered and didn't take the proper precautions um, and so the the fear now is that we'll have um, uh, the spike in, in hospital admission will surpass what we saw in the summer what we saw in July and so you know if people uh, aren't following the the officials the health officials guidelines that might be where we end up you know surpassing July's numbers. Okay, well, let's uh, hope people follow the rules, stay as safe as possible this holiday season. Ana Ibarra, reporter for Cal Matters, I appreciate your time uh, and your insight. Thank you very much. Thank you. And remember to join us here each Wednesday for more great conversations with the reporters from Cal Matters.